Hey everyone. So the uh, current outbreak of the COVID-19 virus around the entire planet made me want to do some research about cigarette smoking, which I've done before. And the reason I want to do this is because obviously this virus is attacking people's lungs. That's the number one organ that it's attacking and it's um, causing real respiratory problems to the point of causing pneumonia and, and even death, sadly. Uh, but, you know, the experts warn people that smoke to quit smoking, to stop smoking because you're much more susceptible to this virus. Um, so I wanted to, you know, go back and do some research and bring up some statistics about smoking. And it's kind of beyond me why cigarettes are still legal and how it's still legal to make them. It's, they're one of the biggest killers on the face of the planet. But, um, you know, and also there's a huge percentage of hospital beds that are occupied by patients that are sick uh, due to smoking-related illnesses. And obviously we all know that hospitals are being strained right now. So again, that's another reason that smoking should be banned. Uh, cigarettes should be banned. And nothing against you folks that smoke. Uh, I hope you can kick the habit because it's really... It's just horrible. It's a, it's poison. It's a poison. Um, so again, um, you know the COVID nineteen virus. You know it's attacking the lungs. I mean, and so you know here's. So I went to several sites. Uh, the first site is I went to is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, so here are some statistics uh, related to smoking and tobacco use. Smoking leads to d disease and disability and harms nearly every organ of the body. And before I continue, I want to reiterate, I got this information from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, a very reliable and res respectable site uh, with real stats and information. So I will continue and have it. Um, more than 16 million Americans are living with a disease caused by smoking. For every person who dies because of smoking, at least 30 people live with a smoking-related illness. Smoking causes cancer, heart disease, stroke, lung diseases, diabetes, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, also known as COPD, which includes emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Smoking also increases risk for tuberculosis, certain eye diseases, and problems of the immune system, including rheumatoid arthritis. Again, it includes problems with the immune system. If You need a strong immune system right now, especially to fight uh, against this COVID-19 virus. Smoking is the leading cause of preventable death. Worldwide, tobacco use causes more than 7 million deaths per year, and that number is on track to climb to 8 million by 2030. Now again, earlier, I mentioned that for every person who dies because of smoking, at least 30 people live with a smoking-related illness. So if worldwide, 7 million people are dying, then you multiply that times 30, which is 210 million people, and that means 210 million people are living worldwide with a smoking-related illness. 210 million people. Cigarette smoking is responsible for more than 480,000 deaths per year in just the United States alone. And this includes more than 41,000 deaths from second-hand smoke. This is almost one in five deaths annually or and it's about which is about 1300 deaths per day this you know that again so cigarette smoking is you know related to one in five deaths per year in this country one in five people that die are dying from smoking related illnesses um smokers die 10 years earlier than non-smokers and 
If smoking among the U.S. youth continues at the current rates, 5.6 million of today's American un, um, 5.6 million of today's Americans under the age of 18 are expected to die prematurely from smoking-related illnesses. This represents one in every 13 Americans under 18 years old who are alive today. Uh, <clears throat> now, the total economic cost of smoking is more than $300 billion a year in just the United States alone. That's per year. That's $170 billion in direct medical care for adults and more than $156 billion in lost product productivity due to premature death and exposure to secondhand smoke. Again, the reason I'm doing this is because of the current virus circulating the world, shutting down the world, and it's a respiratory virus. It attacks the lungs. Well, you know, smoking... <laughs> um, so I'll just continue. As of September of 2018, about 2,000 people younger than 18 years old smoked their first cigarette, and 300 under 18 became daily smokers. Now, of course, that's before the uh, smoking, um, that's before the smoking uh, or the the age requirement to buy cigarettes went from 18 to 21, which is huge, uh, because the, if you know most people are not going to start smoking at the age of 21 or above. So this is going to definitely help help cut down on new smokers. And also, many years ago, tobacco companies had contracts with convenience stores like 7-Elevens to be able to display. Uh, little racks with the cigarettes on the countertops. I remember this as a kid, and the reason they did this is because they knew that kids would steal a lot of these cigarettes and smoke them and get hooked, and then they, those would be their future customers. That's how sick these companies are. So, but of course, a law years ago changed that where they had to put the cigarettes behind the counter. And now, of course, the I believe it's nationwide that the age requirement is now 21. So, which is good because, again, most people are gonna that most smokers that start smoking start as a teenager. Now, as of um, so, here are some statistics from the World Health Organization. And again, the World Health Organization is a very reliable and respectable organization and website. And that's where I got these statistics. Now, the country smoking rates for men are pretty high in many countries. The highest one is in Indonesia. The male smoking rates are 76... Is seven, the smoking rates for men in Indonesia is 76.2%. But for women, it's only 3.6%. In Jordan, it's 70.2%. And in women, it's below 11%. In Kiribati, it's 63.9% for men and 40.9% for women. In Sierra Leone, it's 60% for men and 12% for women. In Russia... Smoking rates are 59% for men and 22.8% for women. Again, just think if we could eliminate smoking worldwide, uh, the health benefits for the entire world would be just amazing. And people would be able to fight uh, off viruses like the COVID-19 much easier. Well, not maybe not much easier, but they'll have a much better survival rate. In the country of Georgia... Smoking rates are 57.7% for women, I mean for men, and 5.7% for women. In Lesotho, it's 55.1% for men and only 0.4% for women. In Cuba, it's 52.7% for men and 17.8% for women. In Greece, it's 52.6% for men and 32.7% for women. 
in Armenia, it's 52.3% for men and 1.5% for women. And in Albania, it's 51.2% for men and 7.6% for women. In Kyrgyzstan, it's 50.4% for men and 3.6% for women. And in Egypt, it's 49.9% for men and 0.3% for women. So obviously smoking rates are higher, much higher for men than women worldwide. But here are some, the highest, the countries with the highest smoking rates for women uh, do not correlate to the highest smoking rates for men, which is interesting. Um, like in Kerbati, it's 40.9% of women smoke. In Serbia, 39.7% of women smoke. In Chile, it's 36%. In Croatia, 33.5% of women smoke. In Greece, it's 32.7%. In Lebanon, it's 31%. In Bosnia, it's 30%. In the Czech Republic, it's 29%. In Germany, it's 28.3%. In Bulgaria, it's 28.2%. In uh, Spain, it's 27.1%. In France, it's 25.6%. In Estonia, it's 24.9%. In uh, Hungary, it's 24.8% of women smoke. These are, it's interesting that Europe, and even in primarily Eastern Europe, but Europe has some, has the highest smoking rates in the world for women, um, which is interesting. It's almost like it's a a fad or a fashion accessory or something. I don't know. It's just very popular over there. Hopefully this changes over time. Now I read a Wall Street Journal article written by Ron Winslow on September 21th, 2009. This has to do with um, the health related effects of smoking bans um, indoor places like restaurants, bars and other places. He said, smoke-free laws reduce the rate of heart attacks by 17% after one year and up to 26% after three years. The biggest declines were in smokers aged 40 to 60 years old. David Myers, a preventative cardiologist at the University of Kansas School of Medicine, said that on a national basis, a 17% decline would amount to avoiding more than 150,000 heart attacks annually. And of course, that would go up as more time passes by. That's huge, 150,000 heart attacks annually, just after the first year. So, I mean, isn't that enough to ban cigarettes? I mean, hello. <laughs> The city of Pueblo, Colorado had a 36% drop after three years of the heart attack rates. I remember that because the city of Pueblo banned smoking indoors before the state of Colorado did it statewide. And that was in the news and it happened quickly after just one year. Secondhand smokers or secondhand smoke exposure can increase blood pressure cause blood platelets to become sticky and in turn injure cells that line the interior walls of the blood vessels. This all can help cause heart attacks. Dr. Richard Sargent of Helena, Montana said he and his colleagues noticed a sharp drop in heart attack rates um, or they noticed a sharp drop in heart attack admissions at the city's main hospital about three months after a ban against smoking in bars and restaurants. And, well, okay, let me rephrase that. He said they noticed a sharp drop in heart attack emissions at the city's main hospital about three months after a ban against smoking in bars, restaurants, and casinos went into effect in June 2002. Then in December, six months later, opponents uh, of the ban got the ban revoked and Dr. Sargent said the heart attack rates went right back up. Before the ban, they were 170 heart attacks per 100,000 people. After the ban uh, went into effect, it dropped down to 102 
heart attacks per 100,000 people. He, his study helped reinstate the ban in 2005. So heart attack rates were up here before the ban. They dropped down here uh, after the ban went into effect. And then when the opponents got the ban revoked, the heart attack ra rates went back up. And then when it went back to effect, it dropped back down. I mean, <laughs> what else do you need to see? I mean, cigarette smoking is horrible. Now, the Centers for Disease Control um, listed some statistics. Um, now, this first one has to do with smoke-free smoke policies improving health. Indoor smoking bans have improved workers' health, especially in the hospitality industry. In Scotland in 2006, uh, after a smoking ban went into effect in indoor working areas, including bars and restaurants and other indoor areas, there was a rapid improvement, improvement for non-smoking workers. And this happened within two months. There were reductions in respiratory symptoms like coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath, reductions in sensory symptoms like eye and throat irritations and runny nose, there are improvements in lung function, reductions in inflammation or swelling of airways, and improved quality of life among bar employees with asthma. Sim there were similar results in Ireland in 2007. Um, and then with re regard to population health and acute coronary events, in New York in 2007, an 8% reduction in hospital admissions for acute my myocardial in infarcation, which are heart attacks, in 2004, the year after the smoke-free uh, law went into effect, accounting for 3,813 fewer heart attack admissions in New York uh, and $56 million in hospital cost savings. In Scotland in 2008, there was a 17% reduction in hospital admissions for acute coronary syndrome. And emissions falling by 21% among never smokers, 19% among former smokers, and 14% among smokers. Now, with regards to population health and asthma, in Scotland in 2010, an average reduction of 18.2% per year in the rate of hospital admissions for asthma in children and under the age of 15. Um, that's after you know, a smoking ban went into effect in indoor areas. And then in multiple outcomes, uh, again, this is Centers for Disease Control, for the United States, in a study in 2012, there were substantial health improvements among Medicare beneficiaries 65 years and older, a 20 to 21 percent decrease in hospital admission rates for acute myocardial infarcations or heart attacks. Again, a 20 to 21 percent decrease in hospital admission rates for heart attacks in uh, Medicare beneficiaries that are over 65 years old. And there is an 11% reduction in hospital admission rates for chronic obstructive pulmonary, pulmonary disease. Now again, this COVID-19 virus is, we all know it's especially hard on the elderly, on people over 65 years old. Well, you know, cigarettes, you know, when indoor smoking bans went into effect, heart attack rates among that age group dropped by 20 to 21 percent. You know, these people would have a better shot uh, at fighting this virus if smoking didn't exist. Now, the American Cancer Society, again, another respectable organization and website, the American Cancer Society, that's where I get this next information. They said there are harmful chemicals in tobacco products. Tobacco smoke is made up of, a th of thousands of chemicals, including at least 70 known to cause cancer, which are known as carcinogens. Some include nicotine, hydrogen cyanide, formaldehyde, lead, 
arsenic, ammonia, radioactive elements such as uranium, uh, benzene, carbon monoxide, nitro, semens, and psychosolic, psy, or polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These are among the thousands of chemicals in cigarette smoke. Also, the fertilizers used to grow tobacco plants uh, contain radioactive materials that are then in the plants and then inhaled by the smokers when they smoked cigarettes. So you're, you're inhaling carcinogens and radioactive materials. So that's pretty much all the information I've got right now, but the point is, and uh, I know this wasn't the best presentation, I just winged it, I just read, wasn't looking in the